everyone, and thanks for joining us as we introduce you to the ever-expanding world of the passenger transportation industry. You've joined an industry that's experiencing tremendous growth and opportunity. In fact, the value of our industry has increased exponentially during the last few years with no signs of slowing down. Now, you may drive a taxi cab, limousine, black car, or paratransit vehicle. You may drive for a transportation network company, rideshare, or an entirely new service or demand. But no matter what you drive or who you drive for, you're joining a long-standing and proud industry that's an integral part of today's society. Most people take it for granted, but the services we provide help keep this country moving. As a professional driver, you're not transporting things, you're transporting people. You give people the freedom to get where they need to be. You reunite family members. You transport children with special needs. You get business professionals to meetings. You get people to their dream vacation. You help the elderly live independent lives and you help people get the crucial medical services they need. You make up the fabric of the transportation industry. That's a noble cause that comes with a lot of responsibility. Whether this is your first professional driving job or you're a 10 year veteran, always keep that in mind. What you do here matters and everyone in this fleet understands that. So, I mentioned the tremendous growth and opportunity we're experiencing and you may be asking yourself, why now? What's changed? Well, if you just look around, you'll notice most transportation services aren't what they used to be. There's been an explosion of new options and services available to the public. Fact is, a new era of transportation is upon us, and that's good news for you. With new technologies and greater public access, people have more options than ever, all right in the palm of their hands. With the baby boomer generation becoming more reliant on transportation services and more people in younger generations opting to ride with a service instead of owning a car, our country's dependence on transportation services is ever increasing. The surging popularity of ride shares and changing public expectations means more opportunity for you and for our industry. The fleet you're joining is benefiting from this new era and I know I can speak for your fleet owners and managers by saying, we're glad you're here. You've made the right choice at the right time to be a professional driver. No matter what type of vehicle you operate or who you transport, your success is our success and vice versa. Without you, we wouldn't exist and your managers know that. They'll do everything they can to support you and give you the tools to succeed. However, at the end of the day, your success is ultimately up to you. Our type of passenger transportation requires more than your typical public transportation service. In this industry, we require professional drivers. And by professional, we mean safe, dependable drivers who take pride in the work they do. Drivers who step up their game each and every day in order to retain current customers and attract new ones. Service has to be at the forefront of everything you do as a professional driver. Just like your managers know they wouldn't be in business without you, you should know that without your customers, you wouldn't be in business either. In this new era of transportation, every fleet needs to be service-centric. Every driver needs to prove to their passengers that they've made the right choice to ride with them. That means exceptional customer service, adoption of new technologies, use of resources such as social media, and most importantly, a safe, dependable ride. You're joining an industry that operates hundreds of thousands of vehicles and transports millions of people every day. An industry that is an integral part of our society and that's experiencing exceptional growth with a bright future ahead. We're happy to have you here, and we know you have what it takes to be a successful and professional driver. Together, we'll continue to improve, grow, and evolve as a fleet and as an industry. Thank you for being part of the team, and good luck out there. There was a taxi cab driver and a man of the cloth who both passed away and went to heaven at the same time. There in heaven's gate, uh, they was asked, what do I get for my rewards that I did on earth? So the man of cloth, St. Peter says, he said, that's what you're, what you're gonna be studying the rest of your eternity is in this shack. 
he goes to the taxi cab driver and he says, you see that beautiful big mansion up here in the sky? That's for your deeds you did on earth. So the man of cloth jumps up and says, hey, I'm a man of God. I preach the gospel every Sunday. He says, that's true. When people came to your church, they fell asleep. We're in that man's cab. They were praying for their life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make that same mistake. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Mirko. I'm an IT project manager here at Liberty Yellow Cab. I also hold orientation and driver training as well. Uh, this morning, as we covered this class, should take about an hour and a half of our time, maybe a couple hours depending on our pace. We can always stop and resume, ask questions, and um, keep going. So let's start, uh, if, you, if I can have your attention, over here on the board. Take a look at our slides. We'll start first by discussing this paperwork that I'm going to pass out. There you go. Uh, the good news is there's absolutely zero paperwork involved with your entire uh, driver training. And everything that you'll do on the road, everything is electronic. Very simple. You'll be using one app. Well, actually a couple maps. If you're familiar with Google Maps, then you're already halfway there. Uh, the credit card machine and the camera in the car are the only other devices, and we'll explain all of this down the line. Uh, let's, so let's talk about this first. The piece of paper uh, that says $25 there in the middle, it's the New York uh, Safety Console.com website. It looks like this. If you go online, you will see this lady right here and uh, allowing you to register. Uh, when you go to register, I believe sometimes they have coupons and discounts as well, so the price can even be less than $25. Registration is simple, and you got to take the class once you register. Uh, there it is. So it can be about only 20 bucks. This lasts for three years, and if you're driving in New York State, you will get discounts on your car insurance, so you will get your money back. Uh, it is mandatory to be a Liberty Cab driver that you complete this course. The good news is that we can start you up right away, get you into a vehicle right after this class, and we'll give you a couple weeks to get this course completed. It does take a few hours to complete, uh, but you can pause and resume. Very easy to do. Um, pick up from where you left off and finish it in those couple weeks that we give you. The other thing, uh, which doesn't cost you anything besides a few moments of your time, the packet that you see there with the line in the suit, that is the black car fund. What this is, it's your free and discounted workers' compensation benefits. All you gotta go is, all you gotta do is go online and register. The website is driversbenefits.org. You'll see it looks like this. Click on this activate your benefits tab right here and uh, enter some basic information. You can read a little bit more about this, do the research, but it is your free and discounted workers' compensation benefits. If, if you got to see an eye doctor, um, might get some free reading glasses, anything happens to you at work, you can be compensated for your time off. Uh, it's there for you to take advantage of, so please go ahead and register. All right, so let's talk about company policy and uh, different ways of joining Liberty. Everybody who works for us, all of our drivers are independent contractors. Whether you add your own vehicle on the road or you are working with someone else, for someone else, we're all independent contractors. Uh, you can put your own vehicle on the road with your own insurance and registration, become an owner operator yourself, but in order to become eligible to take Medicaid calls, you must have, your own, uh, you must have the vehicle you're working in insured and registered under Liberty. Lease a registered vehicle and work directly with the owner operator of that car. Uh, you can do this week to week, and some owner operators offer this option day to day as well. So you can do a daily lease, weekly lease, or work with your own car, uh, which does require additional steps, deposits, and fees, which will all be explained to you. Stop by any time at our office here at 1580 Kenmore Avenue, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Uh, a little more information on leasing your vehicle, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the time and place to get started. Uh, if you are ever involved in any accident, even though it is not your own car, uh, you are going to be covered with the lease fee that you pay. You don't have to worry about insurance payments, vehicle maintenance. All you got to do is pay the lease fee and um, everything else required based on the business relationship you have with the owner of that car. Any accidents, please take photos, file a police report, exchange insurance information, go to the whole nine yards, uh, complete the whole full process. 
for any technical difficulties, please call the driver line 877-0462, but you will have all sorts of uh, phone numbers and contacts that you can reach out to. The owner of the car, their phone number, you can call and text, they're, very, uh, they're available, they'll answer back to you. Uh, if there is an accident, they can set you up with another vehicle, they might send their own tow truck driver out there. Uh, you will learn all this uh, down the line. Uh, so, getting paid. Um, if you're a uh, weekly lease driver or an owner operator, you get paid once a week. And there is no week in between, so you get paid for your seven days on the eighth day. Uh, let's say you are a weekly lease driver that has a business relationship with an owner who requires a lease fee up front and a 50-50 split on all fares, 50% commission, meaning half of all of your work goes to you, the other half goes to the owner operator, who in turn owes fees and payments to the company uh, itself. Here's an example of a driver uh, that completed $400 in calls uh, in a day. Uh, he got there by collecting $100 in cash from a few calls and $300 in everything else. Everything else would be charges. That could be gift cards, credit cards, app payments, not emergency medical transportation accounts where all you collect is a signature at the end of a trip. And keep in mind there is no paperwork, so the signatures are collected electronically with the tablet that you have in the car. So cash and everything else. Everything else is 300, cash is 100, your total for the day is 400. When you go uh, to get paid on the eighth day, so let's say your cash out day is Friday. Uh, and if you are a weekly lease driver, you will get paid for everything from last week Friday up until Thursday midnight. So everything you did up until Thursday midnight from last week Friday, you get paid on the following day, maybe even Friday morning. Uh, with the daily lease, uh, depending on when you return a vehicle and when you're done, you can get paid right at the end of your shift. So let's say you lease a car early, 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning, uh, which is actually a very busy, uh, busy time for us. Uh, and you return a vehicle by 5 p.m. in the afternoon, and if someone's still in the office, that owner operator can pay you right there and then. They can pay you out in cash, uh, personal check, but they're going to take a look at how your day was and split the 50-50 with you, meaning this. So you made 400 and you get, you get to keep $200, but since 100 of it is already in your pocket from all the cash that you have collected, that owner operator only owes you another $100. They're not going to take any of your cash. Uh, at the end of the day, end of the week, it's always going to be 50-50. Let's say it's an example where you collected $400 in just cash. Unlikely to happen, but it can. That means that you owe that owner operator $200 now because you have collected $200 more than what your 50% is. And the other way around, of course, if you collected $400 without any cash, you will get paid a full $200 sum. We don't take taxes out or anything like that. Like I mentioned previously, you are all independent contractors. Uh, we make sure that you pay the lease fee and the 50-50 split on all fares or whatever deal you have with that particular owner operator. Uh, you will be paying for things like gas, uh, and you know, car hygiene is very important. So every once in a while, if you go to Delta Sonic, or car fragrances and things like that, maybe even um, for excellent customer service, uh, you know, uh, purposes, you might want to get like a kid seat for certain customers, a stepping stool, uh, stepping stool to help passengers get into a car. Keep in mind that as an independent contractor, every dollar that you spend that is business related, you should keep track of your receipts and business costs. Uh, when it comes to do your taxes, this will be part of your deductible. Uh, every dollar for gas, that's going to be a lot of money throughout the year. So uh, an electronic gas card is a great way to keep track of that because as you can imagine, it's going to be a lot of receipts that you got to keep. Uh, every dollar you spend, and I believe that even things like your cell phone, your cell phone bill, which you will be using a lot, uh, are part of business, a part of your business. So keep track of everything. A couple other points here on this slide here. Um, Talk about uh, UB Campus Cash. So we do accept UB Campus Cash. This is done manually. You will have to give our dispatchers a call. Uh, the line is 716-877-7111. It is the number you call whenever you need to speak to a dispatcher. Uh, dispatcher. Uh, a, a real live person will get on the phone and help you out with whatever you need. They're available 24-7. In a case with UB Campus Cash, you will just read out the information that's on that student ID, which will be their name and student ID number. Make sure to take this payment only when you have the ID. 
uh, and not just to uh, take this information verbatim from the passenger, right? For example, it could be their roommate's student ID, right? Have the ID handy. And the payment goes through very quick. It only takes a couple minutes of your time. Uh, the last point here just mentions that this driver made $200 plus $20 in credit card tips, uh, which brings me to mention that all tips are 100% yours to keep. You don't have to split tips with the owner operator. Cash tips, it's up to you to keep track of that. You don't have to report those to anyone, um, to your business. All right, so the next slide here shows the same thing, uh, the same kind of day where the driver made $400, $300 in charges, $100 in cash, but this was an owner operator, someone driving with their own car. When you do this, you get to keep a bigger slice of the pie. So instead of turning in $200, uh, $200 50%, this driver turned in 20% of all their cash earnings and 30% of everything else. And you remember what everything else was, all charges. Uh, that breaks down to $20 fee for the $100 earned and $90 from the $300 earned. Altogether, this driver pays out $110 instead of $200 as a leasee uh, might have. Getting to keep almost $300 um, driving your own car is, as you can see, it's a great benefit. Uh, there are other fees associated with driving with your own car. For example, we, uh, vehicle wear and tear, repairs and all of that will be coming out of your pocket. But uh, remember what I said about all business-related costs and keeping track of your receipts. Uh, so what do we have here? We have a driver that ended up making $310 plus cash tips compared to the leasee who made $220 plus cash tips. Um, so let's talk about medical transportation. We do a lot of account work. Liberty will offer you two types of jobs. They will either be uh, pay in car or account trips. You won't see any other third type. Everything that is account um, actually, let me start back there. So, uh, talking about medical transportation, Liberty offers you two types of calls. They will either say type paying car or type account. About 40%, 40 to 50% of all the work that you do will be account related. The other half are your uh, you know, classic point A to point B, customer pays at the end of the trip, uh, paying car trips. So you will get to do a lot of account trips. Most of our account trips happen to be uh, 8, 8, uh, 8, account 882 MAS, Medical Answering Service, Medicaid. Uh, nine out of 10 times you get an account trip, it's gonna be 882 MAS. You'll see quite a lot of these, and this is a very precious account for us. Uh, this account, like all others, um, have a set of rules that you have to follow. Uh, the rules are pretty simple, but very important. Uh, Simple, uh, asking you to make sure to pick up the right customer. If you're picking up John Doe, make sure it's just John Doe and not Jane Doe and not Susan Bloggs and whoever else the, the customer is asking you to pick up along the way. Uh, complete the trip, uh, take them to their uh, appointment, the destination that is on the screen of your tablet. We're not gonna do personal chores or anything like that. Uh, go to Wegmans, uh, get the laundry done with them, right? Just take them to their appointment and don't forget to collect the signature at the end of the trip. And that is all. You do everything you're supposed to and you will get paid like this was a credit card at the end of a trip. It's an electronic, uh, it's an electronic trip and uh, you will get paid on your payday, cash out day. Uh, 990 MTM is the only account that requires an additional step in order for you to become eligible. It requires a drug test to be completed. It is not going to cost you anything. All you have to do, uh, all you have to do, is go to a clinic uh, where we send you, get this completed, and you know once we process everything, you'll be able to take at least a couple more tr uh, trips a week. 990 MTM is another non-emergency medical transportation account, very similar to Medicaid, very similar to all accounts. All accounts just require you to follow the rules, pick up the right person take them to the right location, and collect a signature at most at the end of the trip. You are never collecting a payment at the end of an account trip. Passenger safety, uh, make sure that the vehicle you are driving is safe for you and the passengers. Uh, when you release C, it is not your responsibility to make sure that the brakes are fixed, that you get new tires, all of that. Just report the issue to the on, uh, owner operator of the car who does charge you a weekly or daily lease fee and they will fix this themselves. 
uh, especially with the bad weather uh, coming up. We know how Buffalo winters can be. Uh, stay on top of this. You see here anything, report it to the owner or the car. And here we are on the last slide, uh, talking about the importance of customer service. Present yourself like a professional, act like a professional. Um, the more you do this, the more regulars you will get, the more money you will make. Never argue with anybody, please. Uh, there is no need for that. If there is a situation, a circumstance where uh, you are dealing with a passenger that is making it difficult for you to operate the car safely or whatever reason, you do not have to take this client. Um, you can accept or decline any call that is offered to you. So if you ever have a customer that is giving you difficulty, you don't have to take them. Move on to the next job. Never argue with anybody, and um, like I said, uh, there's no reason for it. There is a camera, all cars have cameras in them, and the cameras are always recording, recording audio as well. So meaning you never need an alibi. If there is a situation where a customer complained, the driver didn't want to pick me up, or this and that, we can see that you were in your right not to take this customer. Uh, no need to argue, just let us know what happened and we'll take care of the situation we can uh, block this customer from, uh, from the company. We're gonna edit a lot of this stuff out. Uh, what else, what else? We talked about the importance of uh, car vehicle hygiene, keeping the car nice and clean. Uh, absolutely no smoking in any car. That includes e-cigarettes, vapes, uh, any, any of that stuff. If you have a passenger that really wants to take a smoke break, we will uh, happily pull over for them as they smoke outside of the car. Uh, on a regular metered fare, we charge 50 cents a minute. So anytime a customer wants to stop, whether it's for a cigarette break, use the restroom, whatever it is, all you gotta do is put the car in park and we charge 50 cents a minute instead of $3 a mile. Uh, no family members or any ride-alongs in your car at any time. The vehicle you are leasing is for work only and you are fully covered as long as you are using it only for work. So please don't take advantage of the car by using it for your personal use. Okay, um, there are a lot of things that I can talk about here when it comes to customer service. It really, the job itself is very easy. Uh, the app that you use, the, um, everything is pretty simple. How good you are at dealing with the people of Buffalo is the most important thing. So if you're good at that, everything else is a piece of cake. So that's it. Thank you for attending the training class. This is probably something we're going to add at the end. Let's talk about the technical side of things. So this is something you're only going to see here during class. It is not part of your driver training. These are our different zones. And when you work with Liberty, you will be taken everywhere. We uh, complete calls outside of the state, outside of the country. We go to pick up and drop off in Canada. We don't do both. So our business in Canada is to strictly take passengers from the U.S. to Canada or take them from Canada to the U.S. But we do go out of state. We do have regular clients that can take you to you know, Pennsylvania, Ohio, all over the place. Uh, we stay busy. But most of our business is going to be right here in the heart of the city in the Buffalo area. Are you both from Buffalo too? Yes. Okay, so you're familiar. What you, you're not, not really? No, okay. but I'm Okay, great. So uh, when we offer you calls, what you're gonna see is from zone to zone where this customer is going. We don't share the full details of a call until you accept it. So you won't see the addresses until you accept the call. You'll see things like this customer wants to be picked up from Cheektowaga to Eastside or you know Kensington Bailey area up to Amherst. Um, these are just different zones in Buffalo. All right, so what I have over here is now I'm gonna present uh, so if I can have your attention over here for a moment. What we have over here are two of the three devices that you have in your car. The third device, which is not on here, is the camera that's gonna be in the vehicle. It is located right above by the rear view mirror of the car. The credit card machine is behind the passenger seat of the car. So all you have up front with you when you're driving is this tablet, and this will be in the back for the passenger to use. It does, uh, you will hear it, and um, you'll be able to know what's going on, 
but uh, it's very simple. It's just you just wait for the customer to swipe their card, and you'll get a message on your tablet letting you know that the trip has been completed or not. This um, this device right here, all you got to do to turn it on is start the car. That's how it works. When you turn the car off, it'll power off after a couple of minutes. Uh, that's a way to restart it as well. If you're having any issues, a simple restart might fix most of those. So turn the car off, wait a couple minutes, and turn it back on. It is. Uh, it, it also has, so I'll show you right here, you can swipe cards right here in the bottom right edge, use a chip reader underneath, and there is a square reader right here up front. Some cards can be tapped against that. If you got an Apple or a smartwatch, you can tap your watch. It takes Android Pay, Apple Pay as well. As well. You can just tap along that square reader right there. So the tablet itself, I'm going to project right up here so you can see what's going on. Um, you will have you will see a few icons on the tablet. Uh, the main app, and which is going to take most of our time, is right here in the top left. That's called iCabby Driver. Uh, let's click on this. To log in, you will need to enter three sets of credentials in order for everything in order to log in. Uh, your driver ID will be presented, will be given to you right after class. It is going to be a four to five digit number. Uh, your vehicle ID will depend on whatever car it is that you're driving and your PIN number for every driver is going to be your full nine digit social security number. For testing purposes here we have entered a four digit number but don't forget uh, for real drivers it's their nine digit number. If let's say I'm going to put in a wrong password here just to show you if any of these credentials are wrong and you press login, you will get a warning message or a login failed message. You can also be um, blocked from logging in if your vehicle or driver documents are expiring. So please make sure you stay on top of that as well. The error message that's stopping you from logging in will let you know what the reason is. Once everything is correct, click on login and you will be greeted with this warning message every single time. It just mentions that it's very important to obey all traffic laws. You will see this every single time. Press OK to move forward. On the very top there, you can see iCabby status connecting. You see this right here. What this is, is your credit card machine trying to pair up with your driver app. When that goes away, you are all good to go. The credit card machine gets its uh, it's got its own um, power source and it gets its internet from the SIM card in your tablet. So as long as your tablet and the credit card machine are close enough to each other and they're both turned on, once you log in, they will pair successfully. If you see that message on the top that it doesn't go away and it's constantly buffering, it could be for several, uh, several reasons. Before you bring that into us here at 1580 Kenmore to check on the devices, make sure that they're both turned on and make sure that they are close enough to each other. Uh, you are urged to take the tablet inside the house with you or wherever, whenever you leave the car. Take the tablet with you. As soon as you step away from the credit card machine, you'll see that thing on the top buffer. Uh, it's not really a problem because you're not about to complete a credit card transaction. You can still accept the client car, uh, calls, look at your previous calls, send out messages, but you will see the thing on the top buffering. All right, so here we are on the, I'll turn this off so we can see better. Here we are on the home screen of our tablet. This button on the top left called the Bits button is flashing. Um, sometimes when this button flashes, so it is gone. What the purpose of this button on the top right here is to offer you calls that aren't being taken by other drivers, whether it's because they're coming from an area where we are too busy or because they're coming from an area where we don't have any drivers at the moment. All calls that are offered are offered by our automated dispatch system. Show you a map here. So here's a map of Buffalo uh, and all these different rectangles with different colors represent different drivers with different statuses. Uh, as you, most of our drivers are going to be right here in Buffalo, but like I mentioned previously, we do go everywhere, out of state, out of country, north town, south towns, wherever business takes us. When a call is coming from, let's pretend this blue dot right here is a job, uh, we put calls in our system, and our system uh, does an automated search, looking for the closest available driver, one driver at a time in the nearby area. 
So these three red cars right here, I know because they're red that they're busy. Uh, this call will not be offered to them. It will actually first be offered to this vehicle right here who is active and available and nearby. When the call is offered to vehicle 627, or I believe it's 677, uh, 677 will see this call, it'll flash, it'll beep, it'll take over the entire screen of their tablet for 15 seconds. You only have that short amount of time to either accept or decline that call. If you decline a call, it will then be offered to the next closest driver and so on until someone takes it. The first circle, the first step, is to look for the closest available car, one car at a time. And what happens when all the drivers are too busy to handle that call, or that call is coming from an area where the, we are too, we don't have many drivers standing by, it gets posted here on the bids board. And it'll flash, it'll let you know there's something posted, you can click on it and accept it and take it for yourself. Uh, but these calls come and go pretty quickly. Drivers are eager to do as much as they can, and when they see a job on here, it's the fastest finger that gets it. So sometimes there is a little bit of lag, like you saw. The button will flash, you'll click on it, and the call is already gone. <laughs> All right, so uh, on the home screen right here, we see that we are active and available ourselves. We are not currently handling any fare, meaning that calls will find us as, um, as calls come out. Right now, our tablet's GPS is telling us that we are in the zone of Kenmore. You saw what different zones are. You can click on the zones button right here in the top right and see a list of different zones and some of the reservations that are coming up from each of these places. Uh, you can list through this and click on it, see other vehicles that are located there, what their status is, uh, and it'll help you better position yourself. As you drive around Buffalo and wherever you go, you will see this zone will change depending on where you're at. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a call in here. So I'm actually not gonna need to show this. I'll put this on my laptop here. Um, so uh, any questions? Uh, I've been talking a lot, so any questions from the two of you, if you feel free to ask. It doesn't all have, it's not all going to be part of the presentation, so he's going to cut stuff out. Just wondering, because mentioned a lot of stuff. She told me before the class started that she's got a specific owner-operator in mind, someone who she's going to go to to drive a cab. How about you? Um, same way that somebody Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. So you'll discuss the pricing, how to get a car, all of that stuff. Good. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, what do you recommend we do if we don't have to some tablet? Because a lot of areas out in the Especially here where she... Goes. Right, so yeah, the first thing would... First thing would be uh, a lot of things, right? A lot of things to consider. So it could be that the owner operator, whoever car it is that you're driving, they could have their own uh, provider. Let's say T-Mobile, Verizon, or whatever. Uh, make sure that they have paid their bill, right? Now, if they got T-Mobile, um, actually, I don't want to say T-Mobile, but if they have a provider that might lose coverage in certain parts, let's say you're going to Pennsylvania and you're on the 90 or whatever at certain parts where the signal loses a little bit, uh, everything that you do is stored in a cloud. So as soon as you go back to an area where there is service, or even let's say your tablet uh, battery went to 0% and you have to plug it back in, it all picks up from where you left off. Uh, so it'll all be restored. But make sure that there, you know, that the provider is, that the SIM card is working, that there is internet. And um, that's, that would be the only reason really for the loss of signal. Just make sure the bills are paid. Um, so, uh, I'm going to stay right here on the home page of the tablet. I'm going to put a call in here. So, I will say, we'll do something simple to start off. Let's say pickup is at 1580 Kenmore. And we're not going to include a drop-off address. We're not going to include a phone number. I'll just put a name in here. I'll say John Doe needs to be picked up. And Okay. I'm going to put this job in. And... Alright, call's been entered now, and let's see if we find it. Oh, there it is. So, immediately it is being offered to us. I did not assign this call to this tablet, because I am 0.02 miles away from this pickup location. That is why I'm the first one getting the offer. I can decline or accept this call, but I'm going to go ahead and accept it, because I only have 15 seconds to do so before it goes away and is offered to somebody else. Let me also turn up the volume on this tablet so we can hear calls when they're being offered. The ringtone slider on your tablet is not how you control the volume of the app. Click on the 
the little arrow on the top right and move the media slider left and right to control the volume of the app. Once you accept the job, you're going to see more information on it. So now we see uh, the pickup location, 1580 Kenmore Avenue. Uh, I also mentioned before the Liberty only sends you two types of calls. They will either say type paying car or type account. Every time you see type paying car, that means that this passenger will have to pay you at the end of the trip. Whether it's ca uh, cash, card, gift card, smart pay, uh, they can even someone forgets their wallet that's not good enough they can call somebody and they can pay over the phone for them a call in our dispatch center so we take payments over the phone and in car but some kind of payment needs to be made when you see this on the top right type of paying car so okay so let's go to pick up John Doe at 1580 Kenmore we can pretend that we are not there already so we can go to option click on navigation if we need directions the app will open up Google Maps for you with the address of where you need to go already entered in. Just give it a second to load and then all you have to do is press start and get on your way. When you arrive at the customer's location, make sure that you leave Google Maps and go back to the main app. So press the home button on the bottom of your tablet just to navigate in and out of apps. Go back to iCabby driver click back because you were under option and navigation so go back and press the arrive button it says that your passenger has been notified so now we are waiting for the passenger to get in the car as soon as they sit down we're gonna press this yellow button POB which stands for passenger on board Immediately after we press that button, the meter starts to charge and the credit card machine in the back starts to play advertisements and different messages that we have uh, put on there. If you want to show this right here. All right. All right, so the credit card machine, when you press the yellow button that says passenger on board, you are telling the device in the back, hey, there's a passenger here. Uh, they will be greeted by some messages and advertisements. Uh, if a customer asks you, can you turn this down, there might be an important phone call. You cannot do that yourself, but you can inform them by, that by clicking on the screen, they can mute the device in the back. So clicking on it back and forth is how a customer can control the volume on there. All right, so uh, let's take a look at our meter here. As soon as I press the yellow button, passenger on board, uh, the price starts at $2.30. Our meter rate starts at 230 and then we charge either $3 a mile or 50 cents a minute, never both. And it is automated. You don't have to worry about switching between different you know, charges. It's all about the speed of the car. When you drive the vehicle, if you're going more than 10 miles per hour, we are charging $3 a mile. Once you slow down under that speed limit or you are at a complete stop, you will see waiting time is going up instead, like it is right now, where we are at a minute and a half almost. And because it's been a complete minute, we've added 50 cents to the total meter rate. Started off at 230, and now it's at 250. Uh, once you speed up and you start to drive past this, uh, past 10 miles per hour, you will see that the waiting time will stop and distance will start to go up instead, charging at $3 a mile. It's never both, one or the other. This red button over here, that's exactly what it does. It just controls waiting time. Feel free to click on it back and forth. It's not gonna create any issues. It's just gonna stop the charge on waiting time. Uh, please use this button if you are the reason as a driver that the vehicle has come to a stop. Let's say you have to get some gas or you gotta use the restroom. Do not charge a customer 50 cents a minute. Simply press pause and when you get back in the car, click on resume and start driving again. At the end of the trip, when uh, you are at your final destination and the customer is ready to pay, please press stop. And as you can hear, as soon as you press stop, the credit card machine has, uh, is now asking the customer in the back to enter their tip option. Uh, if this customer is paying in cash, they don't have to work with the credit card machine in the back. You have to be the one to tell the system that. So click on the cash button on the top right here. It's going to ask you to confirm that this is a cash payment, so please press force. And as soon as you confirm that, the call is cleared off your tablet. It is also cleared off the credit card machine in the back, and you are back here where you can take the next call. It's very simple. Let's do another example. This time, uh, 
I'll include a customer phone number. The call I'm putting in right now, the pickup location is going to be at 100 Main Street in Tonawanda. Because this call is too far away from where our tablet is right now, I have to assign this call to myself, otherwise a real driver will take this call. All right, call is being put in right now. And when a call is assigned to you, when it's offered, you will see a message on the top. It's going to say, this is your pre-assigned call. Let's just give this system a couple seconds to find the call to find us. Here it is. So again, blue screen. It takes over the entire tablet every time there is a job offer for you. It says this is your pre-assigned call. Pickup is in the zone of Tonawanda. Drop off in the zone of Kenmore. And the distance that you see here is a straight line distance from your tablet to the customer's pickup location. Go ahead and accept this. Once I accept the call, the first thing I want to check out is right here in the top right to see whether this is a type paying card trip or an account trip, letting me know ahead of time if this customer will have to pay me directly or if all I need from them is their signature at the end of the trip. All right, so we're picking up John Doe again, and now we see a phone number. This 716-877-7114 is the phone number you're going to see for every single customer that you have. This is a direct line for that customer. You will never see their actual phone number, and they will never see your phone number when you call them. Phone numbers are masked. This customer, and I can pull up the device right here. So what we have here on the right-hand side is the customer cell phone. On the left-hand side is your driver tablet. When you accept the call, the customer is notified that you are on their way to pick them up via text message. The latest message they got right here, sent by one of our office phones, not your phone number, mentions to them that Liberty Car number T1010 is on the way, and you can track its progress by clicking here. We send this link to the customer as soon as you hit accept on a job. They do not need to download any kind of app, any kind of software. All they need is internet, Wi-Fi, or data. And this is what they're going to see. They will see a map of Buffalo or wherever you're coming from. They'll be told how many minutes away you are. They'll see the route that you're taking. And they can click on Show More here to see. They'll see your photo right here in the bottom left with your name and vehicle description. So the customer knows who's coming to pick them up and when, and in what car. All right, so now go back, uh, have your attention back here on the left-hand side on the driver tablet. If you want to contact this customer to let, make sure that they pick up and they know that you're coming, or for whatever reason you need to speak to the customer, all you gotta do is just call that number. Call 877-7114, like I'm doing right now with my own phone. Your phones will be paired up with your driver profile. Sorry, recorded. Actually, let me just do that again so we can hear that message. We will now connect you to your fare. All calls are recorded. So I'm calling the customer from my personal phone, and this is what the customer is seeing. They are seeing they're getting a phone call from 877-7111. Go ahead and answer. My phone number is not being shared. Hello? Sorry. Okay. Um, and this customer, if they were to call back, because they missed that phone call, this is what they would hear. Hi. Thank you for calling Liberty Yellow Cab. Please tell us how we can help you today. For example, you can say, I'd like a ride now, or a count ride. All right, so the, that's a line for customers to call, but when a driver calls 877-7111, the driver hears a different menu. 
So there are only two phone numbers Hi. you need to know. Thank you Very for similar to 877-7111, which is this. At 100 Main Street, Tonawanda. To connect your rider, press 1. For more information on this ride, press 2. If you cannot service this ride, press 3. You will hear different options, uh, just about any one of these um, that you click on will connect you to a dispatcher. They can help you with just about anything. So the other phone number is 877-7114, and this is what we recommend, uh, the phone number you call if you want to speak to your customer directly. On the application that you fill out, you're going to enter in your personal cell phone number or whatever phone you're using for work. We make that number part of your driver profile. So when you log in with the credentials that we provide you with, you are paired up with this customer with your phone number, and your, but your information is never shared. It just have a direct line to them. And you can only speak to this customer, and they can only call you while you have their call on your screen. As soon as you finish this call, that connection is severed, and that the 711 phone number won't connect you to anybody. Okay, so we went to option and navigation for direction. You saw how that works. Every time you click on this button, and there's an address provided, it's going to be loaded with Google Maps. So you don't have to manually type in an address. It'll always update to where you got to go. All you got to do is press start and head out to pick up the customer. Okay, so let's go back to the main app. So uh, currently, we haven't moved, of course, we're just sitting here in the office. So I cannot press arrived, and, tell, and the, app, I mean, the app will not let me press arrived. It's letting me know that I cannot mark the booking status as arrived because I'm not within the required proximity of this passenger. I can press this button all day. It'll keep giving me the same error message. In order for the arrive button to work and notify the customer that they're outside and to get you to the next screen so you can start the meter and charge them for the fare, you have to be 0.3 miles or closer to the pickup location. There is a bit of a margin of error, but you got to be there. you got to be very close to the passenger in order for this to work. So what I'm going to do is remove these rules just for this call, for this driver, so that we can go ahead and finish this trip. If a dispatcher is to lift these distance restrictions, you will get a message on the screen of your tablet that it, it was done. Anytime a dispatcher makes any changes to your call or sends you a direct message, it comes across your screen. You can read it and press OK to get it off. All right, so now we can go ahead and press Arrive. It's saying that the passenger has been notified. Here is the passenger getting a phone call just because we had clicked Arrive, and this is what they're going to hear. Liberty Ride is outside waiting for you. And that uh, the link that we sent them previously is also letting them know that you are right outside. All right, so now you are waiting for the passenger to get in the car so you can press POB and start this fare. What happens if the customer is not coming out? Um, you tried calling them, they're not answering. Uh, you got other calls that you want to take care of. Uh, what you have to do is request a no show. Please do not drive away until this call is cleared off your screen. In order to request a no-show, there are a few things you can do. The first thing you should try doing is this. Go to Options in the bottom right and click on this button on the top that says No-Show. It's going to say, are you sure you want to mark this job as a no-show? Press OK. And you'll be notified to stand by. An operator will be in touch to process this request. Requesting a no-show uh, is automated. And it can get rid of a call off your screen very easily and very quickly. So please make sure to do this after you've given the customer a few minutes to come out. Don't do it immediately. After all, you do want to get paid. So here is the customer. Again, now they're getting a phone call. Another one sent by our automated phone system. And this is what they're going to hear. The driver is having trouble finding you. If you need a few more minutes, press 1 to cancel your ride. Press 2. To be connected to your driver, press 3. For other options, press 4. So I'm going to go ahead and press 1, which was... Okay. Your driver will wait a few more minutes. See you soon. 
whichever one of the prompts that the customer selects, um, you'll be notified immediately. So if they still need a few more minutes, you'll get that message. If they want to cancel the trip, it will be taken off of your screen. If they want to speak to you, you will get a phone call uh, from them. Uh, but don't rem uh, remember, phone numbers aren't shared. You'll see a phone call coming from Liberty's office. So please pick up. It could be the customer letting you know important information. So just like with any message that comes across your screen, press OK on the bottom to get it off. Customer was notified. You're there. You're waiting for them. They needed a few more minutes. They finally come out. What do you do? Trick question. You don't do anything. You wait for them to get in the car before you press this yellow button. POB, passenger on board. And as soon as you click on this button, we start to charge. So please don't start that, uh, don't start the meter until the customer is in the car. They should always see $2.30 when getting inside our cabs. All right, uh, we are a little, bit, a little bit familiar with the screen. We already saw what this looks like. Uh, the red pause button and resume controls waiting time. You can press this back and forth. Uh, and then press stop at the end of the trip. Now we see where we got to take this customer to. This is a passenger that's given us pickup and drop off location. If I was to go to option and navigation again, this time with the passenger inside the car and the meter running, I see what the price of the trip is as I'm looking at directions. You can move this black box around if it's in the way. And as you can see, it's taking you to 1524 Kenmore. You don't have to type it in manually but you always can if needed be. And take whichever route works best for you and the passenger. To go back, at the end of the trip, you gotta make sure you go back to the main app. You can leave by clicking the home button on your tablet and going back to iCabby driver, but this black box is a shortcut. You can click on this and be taken right back to your app. Don't forget to go back and press the stop button at the end of the trip. As soon as you press stop, the credit card machine is always gonna ask the customer to put in their tip option. The credit card machine asks the customer three, uh, three things. First is choose a tip option. The second is swipe, chip your card, tap payment, whatever they can. And the third and last is please select the receipt option. After they do all of that, the call will be cleared off your screen. Every time the machine in the back is being used, all you gotta do is press stop and you just wait for the call to come through. You are done doing anything else. So please don't touch any of these buttons here. But let's say this customer has changed their mind. You press stop and they're saying, I wanna go somewhere else. I wanna go a few miles this way or can you take me around the block? Uh, make sure that you are charging every time the customer is using the car. So in order to do that, you do not have to finish this trip and start a new one. Simply press back on the bottom and keep driving. If you keep driving, the distance will go up. But if it's waiting time that you have to charge, just click on resume again and the meter will keep going. You can go back and forth and the call will not go away. It will not create any issues. You cannot get rid of this call until a payment method is accepted in the back or you confirm it as cash. Even if your tablet was to, battery was to die and you turn it back on, it'll pick up right from where this call was. All right, so let's actually do a credit card trip. So this is what that would look like. So if you want to take a look over here, like I mentioned, the first step is uh, please choose a tip option. Uh, when the fare is under $15, uh, it'll ask the customer to leave a dollar, two, three, four, five dollar tip, or they can press other amount. Other amount is where they can put in any tip they want. If a customer doesn't want to put a tip in, tell them to press other amount and leave the tip in at zero. Then all they have to do is press enter, which is the arrow right next to six and nine. And now they have to present their card. Swiping is right here in the corner. There is a chip reader underneath. Uh, this card only takes swipe, so we'll go ahead and swipe it. The card is approved, and the last thing that the customer needs to do is choose a receipt option. There is no printer in the car, so if somebody wants a receipt, they can have it texted to their phone or any phone, emailed, or no thanks. They have to select one of these three options in order for the call to be finalized. And you will get a message on your tablet saying that success, the card was charged for this amount. You can press OK on the bottom to get this off your screen. You're back to the home page where you can go ahead and take the next call. All you gotta do is press stop 
and make sure that your tablet is close enough to the credit card machine so the credit card machine has the internet to process a credit card. All right, so we're back here. Let's see, we got plenty more calls to go over. Um, uh, so this is a real call, actually. We're not gonna go ahead and accept this. We are logged here, logged in here at the office. And the pickup is in Kenmore, drop off is in Orchard Park. This is an excellent call. It is less, it's less than a half a mile away, and I would take this customer all the way to Orchard Park. Every job that you take pays about $3 a mile, whether it's Medicaid, 990 MTM, regular cash call, they all offer about $3 a mile. So to avoid the headache of listening to this beep, we're gonna uh, mute the tablet again. And to do that, that's the button on the side there and move the media slider all the way down. There we go. Another nice call, Kenmore to Amherst. And remember what I said about the distance that you see here. It is a straight line distance. So for this call, the pickup location is somewhere in Hurdle, 0.71 miles away. As a crow flies, so it doesn't account for um, actual traffic and the routes that you'll take. So you're gonna know that it's always a little bit more than what you see here, but it gives you a rough idea of how far you gotta go to pick up this customer. Uh, the bids button is flashing. So here's a call in West Seneca. I can click on this call right here and accept it if I wanted it. This is a pickup in West Seneca. So we are being interrupted by another call being offered. Pickup in Riverside, destination to West Side. What is happening now, and I can see right here on the bottom, so it's 11.11. All of our reservations for 11.30 in Buffalo have gone out at 11.10, 20 minutes before they are due. Uh, if all the reservations at 11 o'clock went out at, started going out at 10.40, we give each call at least 20 minutes uh, for a driver to accept it and get there in time. If a call is coming from somewhere farther away, let's say that Kenmore to Orchard Park call was in reverse. It was from Orchard Park to Kenmore. Because Orchard Park is farther away from our, air, our main area of operation, that call will go out about 25, 30 minutes, maybe even more than that, before it is due. Depending on where the calls are coming from, that is gonna, be, that is gonna decide the lead time. I was looking at a call right here. It was in West Seneca, and now it's gone. A real driver has taken it. If you remember, the calls, that get <clears throat> the calls that get posted here on the bids table are the ones that are not in your nearby area. All those blue calls, I think there was four or five of them, all of those were about a mile or two away, really near to pick up. The West Seneca call was 10 miles away, so that's why it got posted here. We're not gonna take you all over the place. We'd like to initially offer you nearby calls, but if you're ever interested in going somewhere else, um, check out the bids table and see if anything's been posted. Click on it and click the accept button on the bottom right. Okay, so now let's set another call here. We can do an account call this time. phone number and you remember how we had a pickup in Tonawanda so we tried to press arrived and it wasn't working this time we're gonna drop try to drop off a customer at a location where we are not at and we're gonna see that we get an error when we try to do that as well Sending out the job right now. I'm not assigning this job, but I made a pickup location this office where we are located, so the automated dispatch system should offer this call to us first, unless there are other drivers here at the office as well. All right, so we don't see a message, this is your pre-assigned job, but I know it's the one I just sent out because the distance I see here on the bottom is telling me this customer is this far away from our tablet. It's gotta be us. We're going from Kenmore to ECMC. So I'll go ahead and accept this call. First thing you should look, well actually I'll wait for this message to pop up. Uh, there's an automated message letting you know, please don't forget to collect the customer signature. And you know by looking at the top right here where it says type account, that you are not gonna be owed payment from the customer. Instead, you just need to collect a signature from them, at most. 
Uh, what it says underneath account will be what account it is. And this is not as important as just realizing that account is different from paying car. Every, you'll see different accounts underneath, they all mean the same thing and you'll do the same, you'll follow the same steps. So we're picking up Susan Bloggs at this address. Here is a phone number where I can reach her at directly if I needed to. But remember, behind the scenes, there's a lot of automation and different ways of contacting these customers. We send them a text message. We give them a phone call that you have arrived as soon as you press this arrive button, which you can only press if you're 0.3 miles or closer to the pickup location, which we are. The customer gets a phone call, letting them know that their Liberty cab driver is right outside. If they're not coming out, you can go ahead and give them a call or press option and no show and select and wait for them to select the prompt. Um, when the customer finally comes out and they get in the car, we're going to press POB. Now it looks a little different, still the same screen, but we see that the meter did not start at $2.30. Instead, it's showing an $18 fixed fare. This passenger is going to ECMC from where we picked them up, and we are billing them at about $3 a mile, or I should say we are billing this account. The price is fixed, so you should take the most efficient route and complete the trip as soon as you can. The passenger in the car is going to cooperate. What's going on right here is what we're being interrupted with is a message. Uh, you can get all sorts of messages from dispatchers. This one is letting you know about train arrivals, as you can see here. Um, helpful information. They can help you uh, strategically place yourself somewhere where we are busy at particular times. A lot of the times, it'll, you'll get this information from us, but uh, often you can do this yourself. Check out your phone for local events in Buffalo. Uh, are the Bills having a home game? The hotels will be busier. The bars will be busier. At the stadium, too, of course, right? Uh, we have contracts with the Greyhound bus station with the Niagara Falls Airport allowing you to park right up front and take passengers getting off these flights and buses. Okay, so back to this call right here. It is an $18 fixed call. Uh, it's Medicaid. Let's go ahead and complete it. So I will just put an option in navigation which opens up Google Maps for me with the address loaded automatically. It's going to change whatever I was looking at. It's going to go to Grider Street, which is where MC, ECMC is. Just press start and drive yourself there. At the end of the trip, it is very important that you click on this black box or go back to iCabby Driver so you can go back and press stop and collect signatures. But we're not at ECMC, are we? When I press stop, I'll get that same error message again that I cannot do this with because I'm not within the required proximity. Press OK and get a little closer. That is all you can do. But since we cannot actually drive, I will have to remove those rules again in order to finish this call. Now we'll go ahead and press stop. After you press stop, you will see that there is another green button for you to press, finish. It's a little redundant, but press the green button twice. And the next thing you have to do is collect a signature. At this point, you want to take the tablet that's up front with you pass it down to the passenger in the car and here I'll give this to you and go ahead and sign with your finger on there all right and now pass it over to her as if she was a driver go ahead and press finish press yes and now you have to sign the customer has to sign and you sign right after them and then you can press finish there press yes and the call is done. You go back to the home page, or we can go ahead and take the next call. That's all you gotta do for account trips. You can go ahead and keep the tablet. I'll have you complete a few calls yourself. All right, so let's see. Let's go back, and um, I'll send you another call. Actually, instead of doing that, so you saw a few different examples of calls that are offered to you. Whether it's account or paying car, you're doing the same thing. You press accept, you see a little bit of inf information, not all of it. You're not going to see the drop-off address and the price until the co customer is in the car. So you get to them, you press arrive. Very important to press arrive every single time. The proximity rule means you got to be 0.3 miles or closer in order for that to work. 
So if you're looking at Google Maps, you get to their house and they're in a hurry. They're already outside. They're trying to get in the car. We got to go, go, go. I'm late. And you start driving. Once you leave the area, if you forgot to go back and press arrived, even though you have the customer in the car, you will not be able to press that button. So make sure you always press arrive as soon as you get there. Now the call, we got to go ahead and decline this call. Don't accept any call unless I tell you because these are real passengers. Uh, okay. So, like I said, we dealt with a lot of calls being sent to us. What if it is a passenger right outside? I message, uh, I brought up that we have a contract with the Greyhound bus station in the airport in Niagara Falls only. The Buffalo Airport, we don't have a contract with them, meaning we can't just sit there, but we can still pick up and drop off customers leaving the airport. No problem with that. But we're talking about, let's say you're at the Greyhound bus station, a bus just dropped off a bunch of people and someone wants to go all the way to Rochester or who knows where. It could be a really nice fare. You don't want to miss out on this. This customer does not have to call Liberty. You don't have to call the office. All you need to do is first make sure you don't already have a call on your screen. So go ahead and decline this. Click on the busy button in the bottom right. And there are four buttons here. The higher button on the top is how you start a job on your own. Go ahead and click on hire. Give it a couple seconds. And here is the screen we're familiar with, right? Meter starts at $2.30. And wherever they want to go, we're going to charge them $3 a mile or 50 cents a minute, right? So they stop for a half hour to get some groceries done. That's going to add $15 to the fare. All you got to do is put the car in park and not touch anything else. Okay, so. This customer needs to go somewhere and you need directions. How would you pull up how would you pull up Google Maps or whatever navigation software you want to use? And go to options. Now because this customer did not tell our system where they're going, they're just simply in the back of the car talking to you, you have to uh, go back because this is just opening up whatever was last on there and manually put the address in yourself. It's going to be on the top and just type in, let's say they want to go to the Galleria Mall. You would take out whatever was in here and type in the address that the customer needs to go to. And until you reach the final destination, you do not need to go back to your main app. And remember, this black box, you can click and drag it around if it's on in the way. And when you reach the final destination, all you got to do is go back and press stop. So you can click on the home button on the bottom or you can click on the black box itself to go back. Go ahead and click on the black box. It's a quicker way to do it. All right, excellent. So now um, what do you do at the end of the trip? Go ahead and press stop. And if this customer is paying by credit card, you are done at this point. Uh, if they're paying in cash, you have to press cash and click on the force button to get the call off your screen. But there's another button here that we have not talked about, the C1 card one button. This is not for credit cards. Uh, if someone even has a, a gift card, if it's a Visa or MasterCard prepaid card, they can still use a device in the back like a regular credit or debit card. The C1 card one button is for special promo cards that we give out to passengers at events and things like that. You might see these every once in a while. Uh, so go ahead and click force there. And it's gonna ask you to enter this card number manually. These, uh, these cards, you know, they look a little different. They're colorful, it says Liberty Yellow Cab on them. You can try, enter, try entering this blue one here. Go ahead. So it's a 16 digit number. There might be funds on there, might be partial funds, or it could be completely empty. Always give it a try when you're presented with one of these by clicking on the C1 button there. Click pay when you're done. If it's insufficient funds, then that's okay. At least you gave it a try. The passenger now can either pay this in cash or still use a credit card machine that is still up and running. You just wait for them. If it's a credit card machine, just sit right here let them uh, finish putting the payment in. If they're paying in cash, on this screen, you can go ahead and click on the cash button. And there you go, trip has been completed off the screen. Okay, you can pass that down to her over there. 
So we just talked about a scenario where you're picking up a customer off the street, a flag down, you're at a bus station, airport, whatever, right? Uh, go ahead and click on the busy button again. There are four buttons here. You know what hire does. There is fixed fare hired, short break, and log out. You can imagine what log out does. When you're done for the day, click on log out and you'll be done with the app. Uh, you can click on the short break button, go ahead, and you will see on your home page now, the button that is always green, it says unavailable, is now red and unavailable. So doing things like clicking on the bids table to see if there are any calls is gonna be prohibited. You also will not be able to see any calls being, no calls will be offered to you because you're on break. So even if there is a call coming out from an address you're really close to, it will not come across your screen. It will go to an active and available driver. Please go on break whenever you are not able to take fares. And you can also go on break if you are trying to use the app to look at your completed calls or send messages without jobs jumping up and maybe accidentally accepting something you're not ready to take. So a um, couple buttons here we didn't talk about. One of them is bookings right here. Go ahead and click on this one. This button opens up three different tabs, upcoming, next day, and my jobs. You can ignore next day. We don't post any calls for next day. But for upcoming in the next hour or two, and you can list through these and scroll down. You can see some calls that are coming up at what time and what zone they're coming from. The mileage that you see here, every time you see mileage, on this app, it always means the same thing. In a straight line, how far away your tablet currently is from the pickup location or the call in question. So what we have next is are all of these 12 o'clock calls. And since these are all coming from Buffalo, they're going to be coming out at 1140, at least 20 minutes before they are due. So you can click around and see what's going on, and then maybe we'll see something like Niagara Falls. For example, this call coming from Niagara Falls will be offered more than just 20 minutes before because most of our cars are in Buffalo, probably about 25 minutes before. You can click on these, but it doesn't mean you get these calls. This is just simply for you to see what is upcoming and where you can better position yourself. That's the purpose of the upcoming tab, and we get there again by clicking on bookings and give this a second to load. What I want to show you is what is under my job. So go ahead and click on that. This black space right here is where you would see calls that, have, that are assigned to you, but I haven't gone out yet under my jobs. If you want to look at all of your completed calls, you would have to go to here and click on previous bookings. And you will see a list of all the calls that you have ever taken. So if you work with us long enough, you will see calls that have, you did a year ago, even longer than that. You can scroll up and down, right? scrolling up and down, and you will see calls on different dates. The most recent calls are on the top. If you took a call today in the last 24 hours, you will see the time of day like we do right here, 927, 1049, 1140, and so on. Clicking on these calls will give you more information the pickup and drop off address, what car you were driving, and if you scroll to the bottom, you will see payment information. Payment type paying car means cash. But I also did a credit card earlier for $2.30. So if I click on this, scroll to the bottom, it's letting me know payment type was card. Was there a tip? It'll be saved here for you. We also did an account trip, $18, it was that Medicaid trip. If I scroll down, I see payment type was account. What account? 882 MAS. This stores, saves and stores every single call you have taken. You can bring the tablet inside the house with you at the end of the day, at the end of the week, and do the math yourself and see how much you're getting paid. There are also, some calls are white and some calls are green. Everything that is white was confirmed as a cash payment, meaning all these amounts you have collected already. Everything that is green is some kind of charge, gift card, credit card, account trip, all of that stuff. Just a quick recap of how we got there again. We go to bookings, my jobs, and we click on the bottom where it says previous bookings, and here are all the calls we've taken. On the bottom left here, there's a button called menu. You can click on that and go to this button right here that says earnings. It's showing us that we have completed five trips today, as we saw broken down trip by trip under my bookings. Their amounts added up to $28.20. Don't worry, your ratio per call will be a lot better. All of our trips are about $2 because we're not going anywhere. 
right? Except for that Medicaid call that was a fixed price. Uh, and then all, those tri all the trips that we have declined have not been completed yet. If you remember, I did decline a few trips. Trips that you decline and are completed, we'll show you right here how much money there was, really just to make you feel bad about declining business. But uh, you will see how much money you've collected, accept the trips, and so if I go back, you can see how much money you've made today, last seven days, month, and full year. So if I click for the last week, I see I declined about 13 trips for this much, I completed this many trips for this amount, and it's broken down for me. Uh, don't forget that these numbers here are before all deductions, before the lease fee, before commission, before the money you spend on gas and stuff like that. And if you need an explanation on how that got there, you go to bookings, my jobs, previous bookings, and you just add it up for those dates. And don't forget that tips are not handed in. So take your credit card tips out of the uh, equation. Okay, so back to the busy button here. We're on break. How do you leave break? Well, you can see this button is not working now. It's only to go on break. Go ahead and click on the red button on the top and you will leave break. And as soon as you are back to the green status where it says available, calls will be offered to you again. You can even check the bids table on the top left. I'm gonna go ahead and put you on penalty just to show you how that looks like. So I'll put you on penalty from now until, let's say 12 o'clock. And we'll say that the reason is a customer complaint driver was being rude and I'll put you on penalty. You will immediately be notified that you have been penalized. Uh, it says you are on a time penalty until the date at 12 o'clock, so for another half hour, and the reason is a customer complaint. We take customer complaints very seriously uh, and if it is a real issue we will have bring you in and take a look at the footage of the camera. So if you did nothing wrong you don't need no alibi, right? We'll just take a look at the footage. Uh, and I did say you have to bring the car in for us to look at the footage, which means don't feel like you're being watched at all times. Uh, we do have a storage that we can access in case of emergencies. Uh, we can always see what's going on, but for us to look at footage, there has to be a reason behind it, right? We gotta check a trip, verify a customer complaint, or whatever it is. In that case, we bring you in, we take the SD card out of the camera, and we take a look at it. Okay, so let's go back to here. We're on penalty and I'll press OK to get this off my screen. I can see the red button on the top here saying unavailable again. You know what that means. You can't do any work. You can't even pick up people off the street, accept anything that comes your way, because nothing will be offered to you anyways. You simply just have to wait until 12 until you're taken off of penalty. Go ahead and click on the red button. Just to see, it's going to tell you, sorry, still can't work. All right? Wait until 12 o'clock. It tells you until how long. All right, but a dis as a dispatcher, I can go ahead and release you off from this penalty. When you take an off of penalty, you'll get this message, system will complete, you are now available again, and there you go. So back on the busy button. Uh, there's only one here we haven't talked about. We know what log out and short break do. We know what hire does. You start the meter at 2.30 and you charge a customer going wherever they wish to go. Now, fixed fare hired. This is a button similar to hire. You use it in street hire situations. There happens to be a 10 second timer here. So if I click busy after 10 seconds, it takes me back to here. But go ahead and click on fixed fare hired. And enter an amount right here for let's say $10. And be careful with the decimal point. You can easily make this a dollar, 10 cents, or a thousand dollars. Make sure it's accurate. And then when you press create, you start to meter for a fixed fare of $10. Every time you see fixed fare on the top, the price is not gonna change. There's also no waiting time. So in the situation where you're picking up someone at the bus station and they wanna go somewhere for a fixed price only, you should wait for the customer to bring this up. You should always try to run the meter first if they're okay with that. After all, that's the best way to make the most out of it as well. But if a customer is trying to negotiate, you want to, you know, uh, try it out because something is always better than nothing. And let's say someone wants to go to Wegmans and they're, all they have is $10. Well, which Wegmans, right? If it's the one that's two, three miles away, excellent. I'll take you there and maybe I'll get a sandwich myself. Uh, if it's uh, one maybe that is, what's the other one, in Cheek Tawaga, it's a little bit farther away. Uh, let's say it's a $20 trip and all they got is $10. 
If you got other calls right there that you can make more money off of, it's up to you. You have a lot of freedom on what calls you accept, what calls you decline, what hours you work, what days you work. You have a car and we want you to make the most out of it. Increase your volume, which whatever way you can. And that $20 trip and now I got is $10 for, I get it, most drivers wouldn't want to take this, but still, you can take advantage of that, right? Maybe you yourself can go to Wegmans and get some stuff done, right? Uh, maybe you can pick up uh, customers near the airport there or Galleria Mall, now you're in a different area. So look at it, still look at it as an opportunity. Okay, so $10, and you can see I've been talking for a while, price is not changing, it's $10. All you can do with this call really is just complete it, press and stop at the end, and collect payment, whether it's card, cash, or whatever they, however they can pay. Go ahead and press cash here, and press force. Great, we completed this trip, and I can go right here, bookings, my jobs, and now I see here it is, $10, pick up location, what time I took the call, and it's white because it's cash. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, as a customer, give me a second here, oh, Come back to this call in a little bit. This device has died. Because someone took the better phone. <laughs> Dies after 20%. This is a shot. Let me turn this on. So we'll do another example here. Let's, uh, I'll send another account trip out. And you can keep this tab tablet for this one. She'll do another one. We're at 11.36 right now. Probably do a couple more calls and we'll just stop for questions. Uh, and that's it. How do you feel about everything so far, though? A lot of repetition, right? Yes. Calls are all pretty much the same. You always got to accept, arrive, press the yellow POB button, and stop the trip at the end. At the end is where it's a little different. So if it was a paying card trip, at the end you would be asked for some kind of payment. Cash, gift card, use the credit card machine. If it is an account trip, all you got to do is not forget to collect the signatures. You what? Can I, can I add something to yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. When you pick somebody up, do not change the destination unless the customer calls MAS and gets permission. Okay? So that can null and void your, your trip, whether you went 20 miles, whether you went two miles. Okay? Okay. You know, I will repeat that. I want to send this call out just because of the microphone for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, but talk about uh, how trips cannot be, Medicaid off. trips are not off the street. They always come through MAS. Oh, that, they yeah, cannot be altered. That's a very important point, Deb. Okay. okay. Because we do have customers that will say, well, no, I don't want to go there. I want to go here. That's all well and good, but they have to have permission from MAS. Okay. You have to have a uh, pre authorization. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm sending you a trip. Actually, what I'm doing is just, again, oh, no, this is 1580 Genesee Street we want to do. It doesn't matter. I'll assign it to you. Okay, should be getting it. I'm sending it now. All right. There it is. This is your pre-assigned call. Pick up east side, drop off in Canmore, and what does that 4.34 miles represent? A straight distance. Straight How far from the yeah. customer, right. So let's say you're picking up a call in South Buffalo and the customer is in Grand Island, right? It's going to go across water and everything. So that distance, could, depending on the zones, could be accurate or it could be under what it actually is. All right. So again, you get a message right away. Please uh, remember to collect the customer signature. So go ahead and press OK to get that off your screen. And you see it's another account, 547 Fidelis. Uh, a very important... Um, What's very important about account calls is that we invoice these accounts, not the passenger in the car who is not paying for these trips. So when this passenger needs to use this account to go somewhere, this trip gets approved by whatever account it is we're handling. So for example, with Fidelis, the customer, they have to speak to someone in Fidelis, not us, to get this trip approved, and the trip will then be given to us by Fidelis. So when you pick up this customer, if they want to go somewhere else, it is up to them to call Fidelis and order another cab that has different instructions being given to them. The customer in the back has to complete the trip that you are given. So you are following the instructions given to you, not what the customer is saying in the back. Um, and so 
but that makes it sound a little bit cold. Really, they're still our customers and customer service is very important. There are little things that you can do. So if it's a really far trip and you gotta use the bathroom, right, we're gonna stop along the way. Uh, if it's a, let's say we're going from right here, 1580 Kenmore to Kenmore Mercy, four minutes away, we're gonna let them use the services there, right? We're not gonna stop somewhere. It depends on how long the trip is. Uh, what routes you're going by, if there's something that's quick that's on the way, if it's okay or not. It is gonna be your call as a driver with this passenger, trying your best to deal with them, right? Uh, know that every time you go out of your way or you make stops, you're doing it at your own risk. And if the account that we are handling looks at these trips and they see that we took a customer somewhere else, they made different stops, we're picking up different people, right? If you're really doing stuff you know you shouldn't have, they won't pay anybody for these trips. So you are wasting your time and gas. The owner operator is not gonna be happy either because they're not being paid, nobody's being paid, and we can get in more trouble than that too. We can be banned from using these accounts in the future, losing out on a lot of business. Okay, so let's finish this trip. Uh, pick up at 1580 Genesee, right? So I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove that rule because we are not there. We're definitely a lot more than 0.3 miles or closer. So go ahead and now you can press arrived. Waiting for the customer to get inside the car. And remember what we talked about no-shows? How would you request a no-show? Can you show me? There you go. With this being an account call, it's gonna go ahead and press okay, just so you can see the following message. It's gonna tell you, you have to wait until 1146. Right now it's 1141. So with account calls, you cannot request a no-show until it's been at least five minutes since you pressed the arrive button, meaning since you've been there. Uh, also under options here, there's another button we haven't discussed. It's called base. There's a few things here. Uh, you know what the bookings one shows you, what the bid shows you. The only three important tools during a call that you will use are navigation, no-show, and base. What base is, is a direct line to the dispatchers via text message. Here are some options, some texts that are filled out for you. You can click on any of these and it will send a text message to the dispatch, uh, dispatcher. If I click on this one, customer not here, not answering. The dispatchers are immediately notified. Here you are, T1010, with the call you are handling. Uh, and they can see under CapChat here, customer is not here, not answering. Right, and then I'll reply back as a dispatcher with whatever, or I'll just say, actually say, um, hang in there. <laughs> hang in there, comment. Hang in there. No. I know, but the camera's recording and I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming right out. <laughs> yeah. So I'll send a message out back to you and you will be informed right away. Uh, you can use this base button to text dispatchers and our dispatchers know to reply back promptly. Uh, it saves you time. If you try to call and speak to a dispatcher, you might be put on, call, uh, on hold during busy times and you might be you know, dealing, trying to call the customer at the same time while you're trying to speak to a dispatcher. Take advantage of this base button. You can go to send custom text and tell them whatever you need to, right? Whatever you type in, go back and press the OK button on here to send the text message out. Immediately the dispatcher is notified. Here it is, custom text. And as you can see, there's a lot of drivers out there using this text feature. All right. You have the base button here under options. You can use it while you're on break or while you're just in between jobs as well. You always have it there for you. So customer finally comes out, they get in the car and go ahead, what do you press? All right, you press the yellow button as soon as they get in. With this being an account trip, and I, never, I haven't talked about the details button yet, go ahead and click on it. All it does is it shows you information on the trip, a couple more details. You see that this is an account trip. What it says underneath, not very important, but you see you're handling a Fidelis client. An account trip means fixed price, $22. Fixed address, you gotta go to here, not anywhere else. 
And uh, at the end of the trip, don't forget to collect the signature. And what do you do at the end? Yes, you press stop and the finish button, correct. You'll be asked to pass this over to the customer. The customer always, yeah, you can give it to her, that's fine. <laughs> So the customer always has to sign first at the end of an account trip. They sign with their finger. And go ahead and finish it all. Now you can do the driver part too and I'll have you do the last call. And there we go. As you heard or not heard, the credit card machine never came up asking for tip options or anything like that. You never got asked if it's a cash or credit card. It just takes you right to the signature page because it's an account trip. Capture those and you are all set. You're back to here. Um, okay, so busy button, a little recap here, right? We know what Hire does. Starts the job for you with the meter running. Fixed fare hired is any kind of trip for a fixed price. I don't want any kind of paying card trip for a fixed price. And you can enter any kind of an amount here. It doesn't really matter. Press create and the trip will start. We already saw an example of this. You know how that works. Okay, so the phone is turned on now. Let's see. Yeah. I'll keep it plugged in here. 11.46, I gotta finish up too because I have a meeting at 12. So there's just one thing I haven't shown you at all. So this is, I want to show you this. Uh, project the customer phone on there as well. Okay, here we are again with the customer device being on the, why did you do that? The customer device on the right hand side and the driver tablet on the left hand side. We have uh, a Ride app that anybody can download. It's free on the App Store, uh, Apple or Android. Downloading the Ride app allows our passengers to order Liberty cabs. Also, not just order cabs, but pay through the app as well. I'm gonna do, let's say, yep, I'll be, my tablet's, uh, the customer's phone GPS is telling them that there are cab drivers nearby, about seven minutes away or closer. Let's say I wanna be picked up. Uh, I'll change my pickup address too. Make it 1580 Kenmore. And let's go to 100 Main Street. They see an estimate, and this trip will be about $15.50. This customer can choose to pay by their card that they have on file or pay in the car or pay by cash. Add different payment met methods and so on. For this trip, I will choose to pay in car and I will confirm this booking. And now while it's being put through the system, it's gonna look for a driver. I'm hoping it finds us. We should be the closest one to this pickup address unless we have drivers nearby. Let's take a look. Ah, here it is. So, pickup is in Kenmore, drop off is in Tonawanda, and the distance to this customer is very short. I'll go ahead and accept this call. There we go. The customer will be notified that we are on the way on the passenger app. They can see that we'll be there in a very short amount of time. It's a fixed fare trip as well. What does it say here on the top right? So let's go back to just focusing in on this. So we have another trip. It looks pretty much the same. It says paying car. You don't know at this point that this was done through the ride app, right? So it looks like a regular cash customer. You go to pick them up, you press arrive. Wait for them to get in the car, press POB, and we see it's a fixed trip even though the details button here is telling us paying car. But you know what the rule is for type paying car trips, the customer must pay at the end. Uh, this customer also selected on the app that they're going to pay by cash. So if they see this or it comes up, this customer can go back to the live call that they're part of right now and change their payment method from cash to card. If they do this, you will be notified immediately that the booking has been updated 
and you get a message paid with app. You can go back here and click on the details button just to double check. Now it's saying type account. Just some more messages that are coming up because of the change we just made. It says type account, ride app pay. It's still a fixed price, same price, but when it says account, you don't have to worry about collecting payment at the end of the trip. Um, all you gotta do is complete this. So go to Main Street, press stop at the end there, press finish, and the trip has been cleared off the screen. Now this, the card that I used for this payment did not have enough funds on it, so I did not collect the $15.50, so you'll get a message to collect cash instead. This is something that I was hoping we wouldn't make part of the presentation. We might edit this around. But um, I said that every time it's account, you don't have to worry about a payment. This is the only situation that a ride app, a customer can have enough funds on it to authorize the card, but they might not have for the whole trip. So after you press stop and finish, you'll get a message if they had the full funds or not. If it worked, it would say payment succeeded and that's it. If you get a message right there that says payment cash, then um, collect it in cash or they can call over the phone, right? We take payments over the phone because the credit card machine has reset. We do not have the option to have the customer use that in the back. They will have to call over the phone and put a payment in or they'll have to pay in cash. But it's not our fault. The customer did not have the right card with the right amount of funds that they were using. So you're not, you're not gonna be held accountable for it. It's up to the customer that they have to pay now either in cash or with some card with funds on it over the phone. And over the phone card payments only take about a minute or two. It's not very complicated at all. All right, yes? So what if they still don't have the money? So if a customer doesn't have uh, money for a trip they requested at the end, uh, there really isn't an excuse where we let that go, right? So it is a situation where you would have to get the police involved and file a police report every single time. Um, you might be thinking, you know, eight, nine, ten dollar trip, do I really want to call the police? You definitely want to report this trip. Call the owner operator of the car, let them know what happened as well, come to the office so we can at least follow through with this, block this customer from using us again because you are working with adults and they should know what the law is. You get into a cab, even if you get out right away, they are using you for your time, right? So they got to pay for all of your services in full price. You didn't mention they can call somebody for a credit card. Right, so a kid that forgot his wallet, hey, call your mom. Have her call the dispatch center, 877-7111. Tell her what cab you're in, where you're at. The dispatchers will put the card in over the phone, done in a couple minutes. And every time a payment is over the phone, you will get a message on your tablet that it went through or not. Uh, just so as, we're, as you can see, jobs are being offered. Even though we are in a zone that is not particularly busy, Kenmore Hurdle Zone, we are still getting a lot of job offers. So you can imagine what it's like when you go to East Side, West Side, Downtown Buffalo, you'll have calls just coming across your screen nonstop. Um, yeah, so bids button again, let's see. Uh, perfect, we got a call here, we can just to show this. It's a real call, so I want accepted, but accept or decline, it's green because it's coming off the bids table. And because this call is coming from West Side, the west side search area is only two miles because we don't want to go over across into Grand Island and offer it to drivers there. So any, anybody who's more than two miles away from any call on west side will see that call on the bids table. And it's gone. A real driver already took it. Remember these calls are first come, first serve, fastest finger gets them. And then you have calls in your nearby area that take across your entire screen. And you can also go to busy, hired and fixed pay hired, when you have a flag down as well. That's about it. Uh, when you get this tablet and you log into it, play around with these buttons. Uh, the message button right here is just your inbox. It'll show you all the messages you've received today. Uh, scroll to the bottom for the most recent messages. Under menu, you can go to settings here and change your offer notification mode from default to buttons. When it's set to default, since we're doing a recording, I have to show this too, but 11.54, goodness, I gotta go. So just to show you something, so let's say 15.80, Kenmore, save the job. See this? 
it's declined and anywhere I click on the blue I accept this call even in the top right left corner here I take the job but to avoid uh, having that issue let's complete this call really fast I recommend that everybody selects their settings to buttons instead of default. So you don't accidentally accept calls you are not ready to take. So go to settings, click right here, and changes back to buttons. You can also change the size of the text on your tablet with the plus and minus buttons here. Auto adjust brightness and so on. As you can see, now if I click anywhere on the blue, it doesn't do anything. I have to click right here to take it. Yes. Yes, so STC, I'll start a job here. STC stands for soon to clear. When you see this, right now this button is black and it's not clickable because we don't know where this customer is going and soon to clear only lights up when you are soon to drop off or soon to clear. So if I had an address here at 1580 Kenmore and I'm there, without completing this call, I can go to options and bids and I can take calls off of here before I'm even finished with this call I'm currently handling. That'll only work when this button is red. That's what that is for. Basically allowing you to bid on a job when you're almost done with the current job. And when you accept that bid job, it goes behind this call, and when this is finished and payment is taken, that call just pops up front for you. Good question. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is log out of here because I'm down for the day, so go to busy, log out and there we go it just opens up Google Maps because that's what I was on there there are plenty of icons on your tablet uh, you can click around here uh, see what they're all about accepting those Liberty gift cards that we mentioned right Niagara Falls arrivals Buffalo events but the most important thing right here is your iCabby driver this clear and taxi app you can click on this it's the status of your credit card machine because we have logged out the meter is disconnected from the credit card machine but it still gets its internet from the tablet you want to have all green check marks working in order for your credit card machine to be functioning like it should